If I'm honest, there are few games that truly make you feel like a detective. Sure, you can slip into Cole Phelps's wingtips in L.A. Noir, or the world's greatest detectives, Cape and Cow, in the Arkham series. Most games need you to solve their mysteries. Most games aren't her story. With the recent release of Immortality, we're going back to the beginning with her story. And asking, what would happen if answers weren't spoon-fed to learners? What would happen if they were never told the right answer? Because the right answer is up to them. This is Ready Employee One, the channel looking at what video games can teach us about the future of learning and work. On this show, each episode we pick a game and dig into one of its core mechanics. We'll explore why that mechanic works so well, and consider how it could be applied to learning. People love detective stories, whether it's games, books, TV shows, podcasts or movies. From Sherlock Holmes to Poirot, from Harry Dubois to Columbo, they make solving crimes look so damn cool. Seeing what others don't, connecting dots, making a case. What is it about detective work that resonates so strongly with so many? There's escapism, voyeurism, curiosity. But I think it's because most people like to solve puzzles. But here's the rub. Most crimes aren't puzzles. It's hard work. It's rework. It's about going over the details. It's about making a case with the evidence you have and hoping it'll stick. Most work isn't a puzzle either. There's rarely a right answer. So how could we better teach learners to make a case and not solve a puzzle? That's where her story comes in. Yes, my name is Hannah Smith. Oh, f it. Sorry. Her Story by Sam Barlow is an interactive film and video game, which honestly is a lot less weird than it sounds. In it, you scour through the police records relating to a disappearance. Those records are video interviews held with a suspect. Those records are also a mess. You must search for videos using keywords or phrases, and depending on the searches you use, you'll uncover multiple or zero pieces of footage. That's not all. The footage returned focuses on the keyword you searched on, which means you are watching snippets of whole conversations, sometimes with no context, no resolution. This is a nice of them. This is where you take people when it's time to arrest them. At first. Your job is to make sense of it all. Using your detective skills and likely a notepad. Seriously, play this with a notepad. You will end up with a long list of leads. Each one of those leads ends up taking you somewhere else. And on and on it goes. Throughout it all is the central mystery. What happened to the missing person? And is this woman being interviewed a grieving wife or prime suspect? But unlike L.A. Noir's grading system, there is no pass or fail here. No final cutscene. No neat bow to wrap it up for you. Just a question. Did you get what you needed? You might have a pretty good idea of what happened, who the culprit is, the motives, the murder weapon. But the game isn't about testing out. It's about being confident in your hypothesis. Because in the end, we'll never know the truth. And you've got to be cool with that. How could we provide learners with more places to explore and strengthen their intellectual curiosity? Their ability to come up with and test a hypothesis? What can we take from her story? Sorry, sorry. The picture, the way it's drawn, just reminded me of the books we used to read as children. Her story is a brilliant game, but unless you want to make all of your training literal detective games, I wouldn't suggest lifting the approach wholesale. Here are a couple of things that I think could be applied to all learning, aimed at improving curiosity and making stronger arguments. Don't scrimp on the details. One of the reasons you feel so confident in your hypothesis in her story is the amount of evidence and details you're basing it on. Learners need to gain confidence in their work, 
and they need something to base their hypothesis on. Her story includes dates, times, outfits, bruises, props, you name it. Make sure you include enough details for your learners, just not so much to remove any doubts. See how they're getting on. Delving into these police records with no direction or feedback to let you know you're on the right path can sometimes make you feel lost at sea. How did her story address that? A mid-game prompt from an unseen character checking in on you. Even if you're not making headway, a prompt does multiple things for you. You have support out there, which is comforting. You might ask yourself, why did you get the prompt now? Which helps keep you focused or gets you looking closer at the records at hand. Use a check-in to keep learners supported, but as a light feedback mechanism to keep them on track. Don't grade them. This one might seem obvious, but don't give them the right answer or grade their work at the end. It's not about getting to correct. Instead, have learners share the hypothesis, share the key information they're relying on and their interpretation of it. Explore how people interpret the same information differently. Discuss why they do or don't feel confident. In my last video, I talked about the critical thinking and observation skills the Stanley Parable fosters. The difference here is that whereas that game provides feedback on player choices in the form of new locations and endings, her story is completely unyielding and in the best way possible. It provides you all it has and asks you to make of it what you will. We all love the reveal at the end of our favorite police procedural, but in the real world and at work, we usually don't get it. Let's train people to get comfortable with that. That's everything for this episode. Let me know in the comments, who is your favorite fictional detective and why? See you next time, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.